Governors, this meeting is being held by teleconference under the Governor's Executive Order N-29-20. The date is May 20th, 2021, and the time is 1.01 p.m. The members of the public that are listening and would like to provide public comments by telephone will be limited to two minutes unless in the discretion of the board, circumstances require a longer period. However, members of the public will not be permitted to yield their allotted time to the other members of the public to make comments. The board's paramount responsibility is to protect the health, welfare, and safety of the public through licensure, education, and enforcement in chiropractic care. Please be aware that this meeting is being audio recorded Please turn off or silence all cell phones, and we will now take the roll. Mr. Rufino, would you kindly take the roll? Good afternoon. Yes, Miss Madam Chair, Dr. McLean. Present. Dr. Perez. Present. Frank Rufino, present. Dr. Adams. Present. And Mr. Sweet. Present. Madam Chair, everyone is present and there is a quorum. Thank you very much, Mr. Rafino. And now um, we would like to move on to agenda item number two, which is public comment for items that are not on the agenda. The the board may not dis, may not discuss or take action on any of the matters raised during this public comment section, um, as they are not included on this agenda, except where, except whether or not to decide whether or not to add them to a future agenda item. As always, we welcome all constructive, respectful, meaningful comments. And we ask that you refrain from any unprofessional comments or interactions with the board and its staff. And at this time, moderator, if you can open it up. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. I've opened up the question and answer panel. So if any member of the public would like to make a comment, please type. I would like to make a comment using the field in the lower right hand corner of your screen and submit it to all panelists. We are displaying instructions for your reference and we'll give you a moment. All right, this is a moderator. I see no requests for public comment at this time. Would you like me to close the Q&A panel? Yeah, well, I'll let you leave it open for the next agenda item. Okay. The next agenda item is future agenda items. Um, again, the board may not discuss or take action on any of these matters. However, um, these matters can be taken under consideration for future agenda to be placed on future agendas. All right. If anyone would like to make a comment on this, all panelists using a field in the and all panelists using Trisha. I'm sorry. Um, corner of your screen. Trisha, I'm sorry. We could barely hear, or at least I could barely hear. Uh, every I could only hear. It's, it's like you're underwater. <laughs> Can you just oh, repeat that? You're hearing my oh. voice is like underwater? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, now just, now you're fine. I see no request for public. Okay, good. Um, I see no request for public comment on this item either, or agenda item either. Would you like me to close the Q&A panel? Yes. Okay. And is there any future agenda items from any of the board members? that you would like to bring forth at this time? Hearing none, I'd like to move on to agenda item number four. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to the Honorable Danette Brown, 
um, who will be administrating the procedures from here. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we have three petition hearings this afternoon. Um, I don't know if we necessarily need to take them in any particular order. Um, we can start with, with uh, Dr. Dibba Gohar. Is he on the line? Dr. Dr. Dibba Gohar? This is the moderator. The only petitioner we have on the line at this time is Mohammed El Shamai. Okay. And I, I thought also that uh, Dr. Godusi's uh, attorney was on the line. Is that right? Yeah, yes, you are. And Mr. Dr. Godusi is here too. Oh, okay. Oh, excuse me. No worries. Okay. Well, um, we can start with Dr. Godusi then, since he's represented by counsel, and we'll uh, go ahead and dispense with that case first, if, if the board is okay with that. And so we shall begin. All right, we are here this afternoon before the Chiropractic Board of Examiners to review three petitions this afternoon. Uh, first one being for Dr. Godusi, Nosrat N. Godusi. This is agency case number A as an alpha, C as in Charlie, 2014-1005, OAH number 2021-040-763. My name is Danette Brown, and I am an administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings, and I have been assigned to preside over these matters. Will all of the members of the board kindly identify themselves for the record, starting with Madam Chair, please. Hi, I'm Dr. Dion McLean. Okay, next in line. I'm Dr. David Paris. Frank Rufino. Dr. Lawrence Adams. Raphael Sweet. All right, Madam Chair, is a quorum of the board present? Yes, a quorum is present. Okay, very good. And at this time, uh, may I take the appearance of the Deputy Attorney General, please? Good afternoon, Your Honor, members of the board, Joshua Eisenberg, Deputy Attorney General, appearing this afternoon on behalf of the Attorney General pursuant to Government Code Section 11522, here to represent the people of the state of California and to assist the panel in fact finding. My role today is not adversarial, but is intended to protect the public's interests. I'm, I'm here to ensure that the panel has adequate information from which to make a decision in these matters. All right, thank you, Mr. Eisenberg. And for the petitioner, we have his attorney as well as the petitioner himself. So, uh, counsel, can you please identify yourself for the record? Yes, good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Mac, M A C, last name Nehore, N E H O R A Y. All right, thank you, Mr. Mehore. And I'm noting for the record that Dr. Gaducci is also. Uh, present um, at this hearing. All right, so we shall begin with the Deputy Attorney General giving a sort of a brief overview of the case as well as the pre presentation of any documents. So Mr. Eisenberg, take it away. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Yeah, so I'll begin with the introduction of the documents that have been submitted along with the petition. And then I will finish with a brief overview, a background of, Mr. of Dr. Gadusi's uh, history with the board. Um, so I'd first like to mark for identification and offer into evidence as exhibit one, the entire petition packet and accompanying documents. The board members and petition have a copy of the same set of this exhibit and it consists as follows. Uh, a notice of hearing of today's uh, proceedings a petition for reinstatement of revoked license dated September 12, 2019, 
an explanation for the criminal convictions and an attachment to the petition for reinstatement addressing the board's questions. Also included are the court records underlying criminal convictions that led to discipline in these matters. Following that are documents demonstrating compliance with the terms of criminal, uh, criminal probation. Also included are continuing education certificates. Um, and after that are documents pertaining to the prior discipline in these matters. Um, finally, there's an order, excuse me, two, two more matters. There's an order continuing the petition for reinstatement from the prior hearing. And a supplemental document was submitted prior to today's hearing, which includes an additional 24 hours of continuing education completion certificates dated January 24th, 2021. At this time, unless there is a request to identify specific, more specifically these documents, I'd offer this entire packet into evidence as Exhibit 1. Thank you, Mr. Eisenberg. All of the documents have been collectively marked as Exhibit 1. Any objections from Mr. Mehere? No, yeah. All right, so all of the documents, again, marked as Exhibit 1, will be admitted. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll now provide a brief background of the petitioner's history with the board. The board issued the petitioner chiropractor license number 21864 on January 27th, 1992. The board filed accusation AC 2008-640 against petitioner on December 16th, 2008 and alleged as follows a violation of the Chiropractic Initiative Act, Section 10, and 16 CCR 317 Subdivision G for, for the commission of a crime substantially related to the qualifications, functions, and duties of a licensed chiropractor, as well as 317 Subdivision H for a conviction involving physical violence. The underlying circumstances that are on February 23rd, 2007, Petitioner was convicted upon his plea of no contest to one misdemeanor count of a violation of Penal Code Section 242-243, Subdivision E1, Spousal Battery. The court sentenced petitioner to six days in jail, placed petitioner on a 36-month probation, and ordered petitioner to attend 52 domestic violence counseling sessions and 52 narcotic anonymous meetings. On April 22, 2009, the board issued a decision and order in case number AC 2008-640, adopting a stipulated settlement effective May 22, 2009. This resulted in a five-year probation, including all standard terms and conditions, a 15-day suspension, a requirement that the petitioner abstain from the use of drugs and alcohol, psychotherapy and reimbursement of the board's enforcement costs in the amount of $3,300. In the stipulation, the petitioner admitted to the truth of each and every allegation set forth in the accusation. On May 12, 2014, the board filed accusation and petition to revoke probation in case number AC 2014-1005 alleging the petitioner violated his probation by failing to obey all laws as follows. On January 30th, 2014, a criminal complaint was filed against petitioner alleging one felony count of violation of penal code section 289A1A, a forcible act of sexual penetration, and one felony count of violating penal code section 243.4, a sexual battery. The incident that formed the basis for the criminal complaint occurred at petitioner's chiropractic office. For the purposes of the board's proceedings, petitioner admitted to the truth of each and every charge and allegation in the accusation and petition to revoke probation. On June 24th of 2014, the Board of Chiropractic Examiners appeared voluntarily in the matter of the People versus Nosrat Godosi, pursuant to Penal Code Section 23, and recommended the court exercise its inherent authority to condition petitioner's release. The court issued an order restricting petitioner's ability to engage in chiropractic practice while his criminal case remained pending. On May 28, 2015, 
the board issued a decision and order in case number AC 2014-1005, adopting a stipulated surrender of license effective June 27, 2015, and ordering that upon reinstatement, the petitioner reimbursed the board its costs in the amount of $2,087.50 and complete continuing education courses for the 2019-2020 renewal period. On September 12th, 2019, petitioner signed a petition for reinstatement and submitted it to the board. Because the burden is on petitioner in these proceedings, I have no further statements at this time, but I'd re reserve the right to question petitioner on behalf of the Attorney General. Thank you, Mr. Eisenberg. All right, now the case shifts over to the petitioner. Um, I'm going to anticipate that Dr. Gaddusi is going to be testifying, so I'm going to put him under oath at this time. Uh, so, uh, Doctor, if you could please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, sir? He's on mute, Your Honor. Go ahead. I do, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Mr. Mehere? Your yes, Your Honor. Yes, I. Would you like to proceed? Yes, uh, I, I, I uh, rely on the uh, submitted application for my uh, opening remarks. So I'll just proceed to question uh, the, uh, Dr. Godusi. Um, Dr. Godusi, how old are you? 60, 66. Okay, and where were you born? Iran. And, uh, and how old were you when you came to the United States? 33, 33 years old. And before you came to the United States, what did you do in Iran? I was a medical doctor. I was practicing in Iran. So you had a medical uh, doctor uh, uh, license, correct? Yes, I do. And how long did you practice in Iran uh, under your medical license? Five years. Okay. And uh, when you came to the uh, to United States, did you try to uh, get a medical license in the United States? Uh, not, not, no, I didn't because uh, in that time uh, I didn't know English and uh, it was hard for me to sit on the exam. That's why I just took classes, uh, very basic classes English and also went to the chiropractic school. Okay, when did you start chiropractic school? Yeah. January 1989. All right, and uh, you were uh, licensed as a chiropractor in January 27, 1992, correct? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, and uh, uh, once you got licensed, did you start working for anybody uh, uh, as a chiropractor? Yes, I did. Uh, who did you work for? It was like different places. I don't remember the name, but uh, different places I was working and Louder. Uh, different places I was working, but after two years, I opened my own office. Okay, and um, when you opened your own office, uh, on average, how many pac patients did you see every every day? On beginning, not too much, but average, I can say like five to uh, five to ten patients. Okay, and uh, did you have any other chiropractors working for you? Not chiropractor. I had two assistants. Like chiropractic uh, assistant. Okay, and uh, your license uh, was previously the first, uh, suspended, correct? Yes. And why was it suspended? Because the uh, using of uh, controlled uh, substance. And was also for domestic violence? Yes, for that one too, yes. Okay, did you finish all the recommended uh, um, Sentencing that you know you take 52 uh, domestic violence uh, classes and also 52 narcotics anonymous. Yes, I did. And uh, since then, have you uh, stayed sober? Yes, I did. Have you ever had any other convictions or any other arrest for substance abuse? No. Okay. And uh, how long was your uh, license suspended back then? Uh, two weeks. Okay. And. Uh, with regard to the incident that led to your license being revoked, when did that incident take place? Incident take place on uh, 
December 20th, 2013. Okay. And uh, you were charged with a felony, correct? Yes. And uh, you reached a plea agreement with the uh, um, Mr. Attorney in that case? Yes, I did. And what were the terms of the agreement? The term of agreement was the probation for four years and uh, at the probation, I had to take the classes, 52 classes of the uh, sex offender classes, and also uh, uh, and also. Uh, Did you have to pay a probation fine? Yes, they have to, I had to pay the probation fine, and uh, also just not working as a chiropractor. Okay, and. Uh, um, the, as a part of the plea agreement, did you have to do any jail time? No. So it was a strict probation, yes. right? Yes. Okay, and uh, did you meet all the uh, conditions of your probation? I did. I did. That's why the probation terminated on January 2019, and the matter was uh, ordered to dismiss on April 30th, 2019. So the matter was expunged from your record, yes. correct? Yes, yes. Okay. This is a court uh, order. I apologize for the interruption. Doctor, if you can please give him a few more seconds to finish the question and also uh, if you can speak a little louder, please. All right. I do apologize for the interruption. No problem. And at the time that the incident took place, uh, what was going on in your life, doctor? In that time, I was depressed because I was going through, I was going uh, through a lot in my life because I was separated with my wife and was going through the divorce. Okay, and uh, and do you regret uh, what happened that day? Of course, I do. Every day, I regret what that happened on that day. Okay, did you, uh, as a result of uh, um, your conviction, uh, did you attend any programs to understand why and how? Uh, you yes. should avoid. Yes, I did. I went to the uh, uh, 52 section of the uh, uh, sex offender classes, and also I went to the, uh, uh, the, the 240 hours of the uh, community service, which I did, and also uh, and. Uh, what else did you ask me? Yes, what else did you do? And uh, for the, what was the question again? The question was that the, what did you do to understand why uh, you did was wrong and not to do it again? And also I attended, uh, I went to the rabbi, to my rabbi, and I went to the shul every week and also the rabbi helped me a lot to, to realize what was wrong and uh, uh, also, uh, uh, I took the spiritual classes for one year and a half, and also I did a lot of uh, like uh, working uh, with the homeless peoples, and uh, also I did the uh, uh, like voluntary work, and. I did my education, continued education to be in the field. But mostly I did the, uh, I mean, I did a lot. I'm not the same person that I was seven years ago. Okay. And uh, especially the, I went to the spiritual classes to find out what's going on with me. And I find out the uh, concept of causes and effect that helped me a lot. So it's not, Anything that I do right, right now, every day, I just feel that uh, I just uh, think about it first, that uh, what is the effect on others and me, so I don't do it. Right. And um, with regard to your uh, educa continuing education, what have you done? Uh, I went to the uh, requirement by the board like 24 hours every year. And also, I uh, uh, did any lecture that I see, any magazines, and 
uh, those kind of things that I have to do. Okay, uh, you submitted all the, all the proof to the uh, board, correct? Yes, they yeah. have. Okay, yeah. and in the past seven years, uh, Doctor, how, how have you been supporting yourself? To, with my family, no, that, with my family and my friends, I was being supported. Okay, have you been able to uh, get a, a job anywhere? No, because I'm not qualified for the, uh, any else job, because I don't have any other skills. Okay. So that's why I just uh, work as a voluntary in the, I mean, the office that I was used to work as a chiropractor, 10 hours a week, I am doing it like voluntary as an administrator. Uh, just is that the way that I giving back to them what I get and at least give it back to them. Okay. And uh, doctor, why should the board reinstate your license? But uh, I don't have any other, uh, I mean, I don't have any other skills first. And also, uh, I'm not uh, qualified for any other skills. And also, that's the only thing I know, the chiropractor. And uh, I have to pay restitution to my victim and I want to have a job to, so can I can give it back to okay. it. And also, also the, I'm eligible for the bankruptcy, but I don't want to do that because I want to give it the, have a job to pay money to restitution to my victim. Okay, and the, the restitution to the victim uh, was not part of the uh, probation, was it? So that's something that you want to do voluntarily, yes, right? voluntarily, because that's the only way that I can forgive myself what I did to my patient. Right. And do you have anything else to um, uh, you would like the board to know about you? Yes, uh, I want to know that uh, I fully accept the responsibility, fully accept it, and uh, that what uh, what had happened, and also I would like the give the full restitution to my victim for my action. I also very much like to be a contributing member to society. All right. That concludes my questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Mehere. All right, Mr. Eisenberg, any questions on cross-exam? Thank you, Your Honor. I do have a few. Um, Uh, in your petition for reinstatement, you state that you've attended 52 classes and you, uh, for sex offenders, and you state that these classes help to change the way you think. Can you please expand on what you mean by that? That, that those classes uh, change me the way that I think because they, they show me that I learned what I did wrong and why I did it wrong, and they, they changed the way I was thinking. So I find out that, I mean, I have to be more respectful to my patient, more respectful to the people, and also the priority always is the patient, not my my desire that I learn. And what insight did you gain as to what led to your behavior in this in this instance? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Well, so what did you? What else did you learn from those classes into why you committed these acts uh, with your patient? I find out that I was thinking wrong in that time. For any reason, I don't know. I was thinking wrong in that moment, and uh, whatever whatever I did, it wasn't right. And uh, also, I learned that. Uh, Mostly, in that time, I was my desire was for myself, and in the class, I find out that I should have desire for the. The priority of my desire is not mine; it should be for the others than mine. Uh, beyond what the court ordered you to attend, did you attend any additional classes or seek any additional counseling? Uh, with respect to uh, the sex offense? 
Yes, I went to the uh, to the rabbi. I was weekly basis meeting with my rabbi. Also, I do a lot of charity work. I I am working uh, with the organization. Is the name is Pat? That is uh, uh, people helping the homelesses, people assisting the homelesses, and we do provide for them the food, fresh food, and make it packages. And I go to the businesses, to the people, to make donation, to take fresh food, cans, and bring it for the uh, homelessness, give it to them. And also I do work for the uh, uh, older people, take them around, help them. And also I, to, I took the spiritual classes for one year and a half. And uh, also, but also I did. I'm, and also I self-educated myself for my education. I go, I took some classes in the college and the, because the pandemic, uh, I couldn't go to classes. So that way I took it on the line in the colleges, took two classes for more than a year. And uh, those that I did. Um, in the petition packet uh, labeled BCE, the page labeled BCE 6, uh, you set forth an explanation as to the disciplinary actions, and you state that you were put on probation by the board for five years starting in 2009 for the use of narcotics. Yes. Um, you understand that that was not the, the basis for discipline against your license, correct? Yes. Okay. Do you understand? Can you... Can you explain what the basis for discipline of your license was? It was violence. It was domestic violence too. Okay, and did did the use of narcotics play a role in that incident? I'm sorry, what? Did the use of narcotics play some role in that incident? I'm trying to figure out no. why that was included here. No, I didn't. Do you understand the question? So did the use of narcotics led to the domestic violence? Yes, that one, yes. I think so. And you also, in the explanation for the use of the controlled substance, um, state that you were arrested and then it was dismissed for Prop 36. Is that a separate arrest from the domestic violence incident? No, the they court come because it was like the same time almost, and it was related to each other. The court combined them and put them, put them on Prop 36, and they successfully finished the Prop 36, and they, I mean, they closed the case. And you stated in your testimony that you're maintaining sobriety. Uh, what's your date of sobriety? Uh, 14 years and one week. And do you attend any sort of continuing uh, Narcotics Anonymous program? Yes, I do. Yes. How, often, how often do you attend? Weekly. Right now, because it's on Zoom, so it's like, I mean, more, I think more. Okay, and have you, uh, as a part of that program, have you worked steps, or is that a part of that program? Yes, it is. Okay, and uh, of the 12 steps, is there one that's been most meaningful towards your rehabilitation? I'm sorry? Of the 12 steps that you've worked, is there a step that you can identify that's been most meaningful towards your rehabilitation? So the first and second one are more meaningful for me. And why is that? That I accept that I was addict and uh, and also the higher power helped me to uh, that the higher power has more strong uh, is uh, stronger than me and he can help me to fight with addiction. What assurances can you give the board that this past, this past criminal conduct is behind you and that you won't repeat this conduct in the future if granted a license? Which one do you mean? That any of your, that any criminal conduct is behind you. What assurances can you give the board? I, I think I, I learned my lesson with the, in the hard way. I lost my like seven years of my time uh, not practicing, not doing, I mean, 
not being beneficiary for my society. And I went to the classes, the uh, sex offender classes, uh, learned a lot from them. The community worked, I learned a lot from them that I can, uh, the helping people is more important. And also from the spiritual classes, classes I find out that uh, I'm, so I've been closer to the God, to the Creator, and uh, uh, my desire is not important. It is, my desire is important when is con uh, is in is uh, when is uh, include the uh, people on it. The people are first, and I am later. I just have a few more questions with respect to your testimony today. Um, you mentioned some sort of non-court-ordered restitution to the victim of the 2013 incident. What restitution do you intend to provide to that victim? The, the, the court ordered the restitution, so I have to uh, give it to them. Um, uh, let me clear that there, there was a civil judgment against him, and uh, rather than filing bankruptcy, the doctor has chosen not to do it, and so he can pay the victim uh, the full restitution with regard to that civil judgment. I see. What, what's the amount that's owed on the civil judgment for restitution? I believe it's about $320,000. Okay. And have you been gainfully employed, Mr. Gadusi, in, in addition to the volunteer work you've done? No, not yet. <laughs> have you sought out any employment in that regard? I am checking every day, but because my background, nobody gave me the job now. And I don't, I don't have license. And I don't have any other skills. And you also uh, have some costs due to the board upon reinstatement. If the board yes. determines to reinstate your license, are you going to be prepared to pay those costs? Yes, I do. Okay. And where are you with respect to completion of your continuing education requirements for the 2019-2020 renewal periods? I did it all. Okay. I'm current. Okay, and if the board were to grant you a license, uh, would you be willing to accept a probationary period? Yes, I do. Okay. I have no further questions for Mr. Gadosi. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you, Mr. Eisenberg. And now we'll open it up to any member of the board that wishes to ask questions. I've got the participants list up, so um, if you can use the um, hand raise tool, that would be great so I can recognize you. Um, I don't see my hand raise tool, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how to tell you how to. This is the moderator. And yes. Uh, so if you click on the participant icon, it looks like a person next to three lines, typically in the uh, bottom lower right. Uh -huh. Then oh, you'll I see, see it. Yep. And then you should see a little tiny hand in the um, participant panel. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So Madam Chair has her hand raised. Um, Madam Chair, go ahead. Thank you. Um, Good afternoon, Mr. Kadushi. Good afternoon. Um, you mentioned that you do plan to pay the cost to the board that's due. How exactly do you plan on paying that if you are allowed reinstatement? I didn't think about it a lot, but I, I have to borrow money. Okay. Um, and you also, um, mentioned earlier that um, I wanted just a little more clarification on what you meant by um, uh, the Attorney General asked about meaning about employment and you said that you weren't able to because of your background that no one would give you an opportunity because of your background. Can you elaborate on what you mean by that? Because I was convicted so 
nobody give me a job. And because the pandemic, nobody, <laughs> I mean, there is no opening a job right now. And also, I don't have any other skills. I was medical doctor and I'm, I was chiropractor here. So half of my life, I was in the medical field and chiropractic field. So if there's any opening that I can go, I go. And as far as other licenses, because the background of the felony as a criminal, I cannot get any other license. So, the so only... I'm sorry, are you finished? No, no, go ahead, go ahead. So um, have, you, are, have you entertained finding employment in other areas besides the medical profession if that has been too challenging to find in that particular space? Um, as part of my probation, I applied for a job in that regard and uh, it, it was online for me to find a job for me. So far, they didn't find any job for me. Okay, and I just have, I think, one last thing. Um, if given the opportunity to, to get your license back, can you give us some details of how you plan to begin practicing again? What type of practice um, do you have a plan of where you're going to practice or what you're going to do? I believe I'm going to, uh, uh, I don't have my own office, first of all. It's almost more than 10 years I don't have my own office. And uh, the same office that I work right now, I'm gonna do, uh, I mean, working, continue working there as a chiropractor. If it, if it board, uh, I mean, grant me my, my license uh, because that place is a place that I have local patient a lot. So far, I just transferred my patient to other, uh, uh, other uh, chiropractors uh, and it's, much easier for me to work there and also uh, is more convenient. So, sorry, just have a follow up question um, regarding that. So, at this facility that you have been volunteering, you have not been um, working as a chiropractor, but volunteering doing what? Administration job. Okay. And last thing. Um, you mentioned that you're up to date uh, with your continuing education. Did you do any continuing education initially in 2015, 2016 year? I see that um, what I see starts in 2017. I I believe I did, but I don't have, I didn't, I mean, include the record for you because I thought you needed just for last four to five years. Okay, I'm just curious. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Thank you, Madam Chair. Anyone else? I don't see anybody else's hand raised. Oh, uh, Dr. Adams. Uh, yes, good afternoon, Dr. Gaddusi. Um, I have a few questions to follow up for you. Um, you had stated that you haven't been able to work so I'm just curious how you've been providing for yourself. Are you living alone? Do you live with, are you, you know, are you married or are you just, how are you, how are you paying your bills? Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, my daughters helped me. One of my daughters is the specialist dentist and another one is the professor in the college. They are helping me right now. So they've been helping you pay for your continuing education and those aspects? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, you stated that you are working or volunteering at a chiropractic office right now and you're doing, you're not being paid for your time at the chiropractic office? No, no, I work voluntarily. And, and you're, doing, you're doing administration work. Can you expound on what you mean by administration work? Like answering the phone, follow up on the, I mean, the billing, follow up on the, uh, anything that I, uh, nothing to do with the direct contact with the patient, I do it. Are you, are you billing? No, no, I'm not being following up on the billing. I mean, payment, following up payment, or if they need any papers, anything that I can help, I do. You stated that you were a medical doctor in Iran before you came to the United States. Is that correct? Yes, I did. 
Um, so you do have some medical skills. Um, did you consider uh, getting a, uh, a license like an LVN or a CNA or pursuing nursing? They don't give it to me because the, the first question they ask is that, do you have any I mean, criminal background? So if, if you say yes, I can do two things, lie or just to tell the truth. If I did tell the truth, they don't give me license. If I lie, is I, I did fraud. So what should I do? <laughs> so so it, so it's your claim that there is no employers out there that will provide a job to a convict. Is that correct? They don't because my age too. I mean, I'm I'm 66 years old. Even for the young people, there's no job. I've got, they don't give me a job. <laughs> okay. Um, you claimed that part of the reasoning for your actions uh, with your patient was due to uh, the stress you were having in your relationship, um, your substance abuse, um, or is that just relating back to the domestic violence earlier? Both of them. Which one? You are talking about 2008, uh, 7, 8, or uh, this one, the 2014? I believe you stated that you've been sober for nearly 14 years. Is that correct? Yes, I do. So the the um, the uh, forcing yourself upon your patient was when you were sober, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, you had said that you you had stress in your life. Uh, are you saying that there was stress in your life? when you were when you're interacting with your patient that may have contributed is that what your claim is yes what what stress were you having at that time in your life that would um justify your behavior as i mentioned before it was like uh, my family problem they had the problem with my uh, wife and uh, uh, we are going to the separation and divorce. That's why it was there. It was the reason. That was that was in 2013 or that was in 2008? I'm talking about 2013. So 2013, you were in the middle of a divorce? Yes. But you weren't using it in narcotics at that time, correct? Well, I, I was not, no. Um, so if if stress is a uh, a trigger for you uh, what what steps are you taking to avoid stresses that might precipitate this behavior in the future mostly i think the spiritual helped me and they're gonna help me more the spiritual program that i had taken and i will take again so earlier when uh, the deputy attorney general was questioning you, I, I, I feel like I need a little bit more uh, insight from you. I think he was looking for some more insight. I, I feel like I need a little more insight relative to, uh, you know, what, what conclusions did you come to as to why, um, really the heart of the matter, why you did what you did, this forcible action on a patient, because you're wanting to interact with patients in the future. Um, you know, what, what insights, what conclusions did you come to through your therapy or through your spiritual journey or, or what have you that, that, uh, as to why you perpetrated this, um, this offense? That's why I went to the, like, 52 classes and also I took the, uh, I mean, the spiritual classes to find out what, what I did wrong and why I did wrong and I don't do it again. So that's why they helped me to, they did help me and still helping me to continue the spiritual path to be more sure that I'm not doing it again. So you don't have any specific conclusion that you came to through therapy as to why? I, I, I understand you've taken the classes I understand you've done all those, you've checked all those boxes. I'm just wondering about 
what what conclusions or insight you have learned as to why you did that because our job is to of course protect the public and i just feel like i you know there the insights that you gained as to why that happened and what you're doing to make sure that it's never going to happen again it's not it's not going to never happen again because i i am more closer to my cre creator and i find out that blessing that god gave me in my life and is more important and i have to help people and use those blessing to help people and i'm not the same person that i was thinking like seven years ago and i am getting better person every day and final question for me uh is uh how are are you keeping your skills sharp as a chiropractor and how are you doing that that that's uh for, for doing the uh, continuing education first and also uh, reading the magazine, chiropractic magazine, lectures, and also the office that I work, I don't do any work on the patient, but I see all the work that they, are, they have done or they do. So I'm not behind. I'm not behind. So you haven't, you haven't adjusted anyone or no. used uh, any of your skills in... Uh in nearly uh, seven years is that correct yes correct okay thank you i appreciate you, your time and and uh, i have no further questions thank you sir thank you dr adams let me see if there's any other hands raised does not appear so all right um doesn't look like there's any more questions from the board. Anything further, Mr. Eisenberg? Nothing further, further Your Honor. All right. And and uh, Mr. Mehare, anything further from your client? No, Your Honor. We stop it. Your, your Honor, excuse me. I did want to point out, I, I as I was preparing for today's hearing, I did note that there's some personal identifying information on pages 21, 24, and 27 that should probably be redacted from the public record. Uh, can you repeat those, those pages again, please? I believe it's 21, 24, and 27. I identified dates of birth and or social security number. All right, so how do you want to handle this? Um, should uh, we have... Mr. Mehere, redact any personal identifying information and resubmit it? Or is it just something that can be used like a, what do you call it, like a magic marker? Um, is it something that's not labor intensive? I, I don't think it's labor intensive, Your Honor. I think just for, if, if you're comfortable with it, I think it, a magic marker does the job. Okay, all right. I'll uh, take a look at that and I will redact the personal identifying information. Again, pages 21, 24, and 27, correct? Correct. Okay, very good. Okay, that concludes the petition hearing in this matter. The record is closed, the case is submitted, and we are off the record. And we shall proceed with the next petition unless, Madam Chair, uh, I'll leave it to you when to call a, call a recess. No, we can proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, very good. Uh, good luck to you, Doctor, and thank you, Mr. Mehare. Good afternoon, Your Honor. This is Garrett Zellin for Mr. Deepa Gohar. Can you hear me? Yes, can hear you. And Mr. Sanjeet, our court reporter, I'll get the, the page numbers from you after today's proceedings. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We attempted to log in at one o'clock and the system would not let us on, so we apologize for being late. All right, thank you for that. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and move on to uh, Dr. Deep. Boy, I apologize if I'm gonna- Deepa Gohar. De Deepa Gohar. Uh, I apologize if I mispronounced the name. And counsel, well, you know what, let me just, let's just get on the record and you can identify yourself there. Okay, we are on the record in the matter of the reinstatement of licensure of 
Homan, boy, deep, deep of the heart. This is uh, agency case number AC Alpha Charlie 2016-1068 and OAH number 2021-040. Seven six four. This matter is being heard before the Board of Chiropractic Examiners, and this is the date, time, and place set for hearing as set forth in the notice of hearing. My name is Danette Brown, and I am an administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings, assigned to preside over these petition matters. Will the members of the board please identify themselves for the record, starting with Madam Chair, please. I apologize, my system is a little slow. Dr. Dion McLean, present. Doc, Dr. David Paris, present. Frank Graffino, present. Dr. Lawrence Adams, present. Raphael Sweet, present. All right, Madam Chair, are, is there a quorum of the board present? Yes, Your Honor, a quorum is present. Thank you, Madam Chair. May I at this time take the appearance of the Deputy Attorney General, please? Good afternoon, Your Honor. Deputy Attorney General Joshua Eisenberg appearing today on behalf of the Attorney General pursuant to Government Code Section 11522 representing the people of the state of California. I'm here today to assist in the to, excuse me, to assist the panel in fact finding. My role is not adversarial, but it's intended to protect the public's interests and to ensure that the panel has adequate information from which to make a decision in this matter. Thank you, Mr. Eisenberg. And uh, for petitioner, uh, counsel, if you could identify yourself for the record, including your client, please. Certainly, Your Honor. May I just ask one question? Would it be permissible if we take off our masks so that you can hear us a little better? I, I suppose so, uh, so long as it's safe where you are. It, it is, Your Honor. Thank okay. you very much. Garrett Zellen, Z-E-L-E-N, for Mr. Deva Gohar, he's present. All right, and good afternoon to you, Mr. Zellen and Dr. Deba Gohar. Uh, at this time, the Deputy Attorney General will provide a brief orientation as well as the presentation of documents. So, Mr. Eisenberg. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd first like to mark for identification and offer into evidence as Exhibit 1, the original petition packet and accompanying documents. The board members, Your Honor and Petitioner, as well as Petitioner's Counsel, have a copy or should have a copy of the same set of this exhibit. It consists of the following documents. A notice of hearing submitted by the board for today's uh, date and time of hearing. A redacted petition for reinstatement of revoked license dated December 7th, 2019, which includes a personal statement. Also included in the petition are 168 hours of continuing education certification documents, proof of completion of 69 hours of volunteer work, 54 articles reviewed by petitioner relating to billing, coding, documentation, jurisprudence, and ethics. Uh, 1, 000, uh, certificates showing 1,403 hours of videos watched or transcripts viewed related to chiropractic assessment and adjustment techniques. A letter from petitioner's psychotherapist dated November 10th, 2019. A letter from a Kaiser physician regarding a health diagnosis of petitioner. Character reference letters, the proposed decision in the underlying case number AC 26, excuse me, 2016-1068, OAH number 2016-041091, and a decision after rejection of proposed decision in that case. Also included is the accusation in that original case, AC 2016-1068. 
Supplemental materials were also submitted ahead of today's proceedings, which have been included in Exhibit 1. These documents include an updated letter from petitioner's therapist dated May 11th, 2021, and a decision and order from the Department of Real Estate granting petitioner a restricted real estate license in DRA, excuse me, DRE case number H-41611LA, OAH number 2020-30552. At this time, I offer this particular this packet into evidence as exhibit one. All right, all of the documents are collectively marked as exhibit one. Uh, any objections to the admission of the documents, Mr. Zellin? No, Your Honor, we would join in their being admitted. All right, so all of the documents will be admitted as exhibit one. Thank right. you, Your Honor. At this time, I will provide a brief background of petitioner's license history with the board. On March 25th of 2008, the board issued petitioner chiropractic license number DC30890. On February 24th, 2016, the board filed accusation number AC2016-1068, alleging multiple violations of the board's regulations based on the following underlying facts and circumstances. Petitioner owned and operated a chiropractic practice. Between January and June 2013, petitioner's practice fraudulently billed patient PS for 35 visits that did not take place. When petitioner was informed of the mistaken billing, he refused to refund PS the money. Instead, petitioner claimed that PS owed him money as a result, PS was forced to sue petitioner to recover the funds. The parties arbitrated the dispute, and in accordance with an arbitration order, petitioner paid $4,331 to PS to resolve all claims. In the investigation of petitioner's conduct, the board confirmed the fraudulent billing and also found that petitioner knowingly caused writings known as SOAP, uh, an acronym for Subjective Objective Assessment and Plan notes to be prepared in support of the false claims for payment under PS's insurance policy. The SOAP notes contained false or misleading information of material fact. An administrative hearing was held on February 7th through 8th of 2017. On August 25th, 2017, the board issued decision after rejection, revoking petitioner's chiropractic license. The revocation order rejected the administrative law judge's April 6, 2017 proposed decision. The final decision and order, which became effective on September 24, 2017, found that complainant had substantiated the factual allegations against petitioner and thus the petitioner's conduct was in violation of CCR Title 16, Sections 317, Subdivision A for unprofessional conduct, Subdivision K for moral turpitude, dishonesty, or corruption, Subdivision L for false representation of facts, and sub Subdivision Q for fraud or misrepresentation. Additionally, there was a violation found of uh, CCR Title 16, Section 318, Subdivision B, for accountable billings, as well as business and profession code section 810 subdivisions A1 for false and fraudulent insurance claim, <coughs> subdivision A2 for writing and support of a false or fraudulent insurance claim, and subdivision B for false and fraudulent claims for healthcare benefits. Although the board's final decision and order did not find that petitioner was involved in the actual fraudulent billing of PS, it found that petitioner was vicariously liable for such billing as the owner of the chiropractic practice. The order further found that petitioner refused to make PS whole despite knowledge of the fraudulent billing and fabricated PS's soap notes in further furtherance of the fraud. The board also noted that petitioner had refused to accept responsibility for his actions and had provided scant rehabilitation evidence. On December 7th, 2019, 
petitioner signed and submitted a petition for reinstatement of revoked license. Because the burden is on the petitioner in these proceedings, I have no further statements, but I'd reserve the right to question petitioner. Thank you, Mr. Eisenberg. All right, so the case now shifts over to you, Mr. Zalen. Um, you know, at this time, I, what I'd like to do is put uh, Dr. Dibogohar under oath, just in case I forget later. So, D Dr. Doctor, could you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, sir? I do. Thank you. All right, Mr. Zellin, uh, either your witness or if you'd like to make an opening statement, um, please do so at this time. Thank you very much, Your Honor. I will make a short opening statement and then my client will make a short statement and we will then be submitting on what I believe is a fairly voluminous record showing one, deep acceptance of the responsibility for what he did. Two, a deep understanding of what he did. Three, a uh, deep and continuing uh, psychological study by him of his own uh, shortcomings in this area and an attempt to rehabilitate himself through what I believe is a substantial and deep uh, uh, psychological inquiry and for his uh, continuing efforts to try to rehabilitate himself in the regard of uh, uh, working with others in the chiropractic area obtaining a mentor in this regard, of, uh, of doing uh, chiropractic, uh, volunteering of uh, a number of areas, and in continuing to try and better himself in regard to the uh, chiropractic profession by studying and uh, understanding not only the actual chiropractic profession, but in addition, the ethics of what he did and how not to do that, and in, in more than anything, putting the patient first. This is his deep and complete understanding. So uh, I, I would ask the court to uh, uh, consider, and the board to consider, his submission as the primary uh, um, evidence in this case. I will ask him to make a brief statement. He has a statement which he will be uh, giving to the board, but uh, in, in deepest part, we think that the documents submitted to the board speak for themselves. So if I may ask that he may read his statement. Go ahead. Thank you, board. I'm here today to ask for your forgiveness I sincerely apologize to the California Board of Chiropractic Examiners, the chiropractic profession, to my patient and the public for my actions three and a half years ago that brings us to this hearing. I take full responsibility for charging a patient's HSA account for services that were not rendered in the amount of $4,331 over a two year period of time. I realized that I should have had more oversight in my billing practices and upon the patient's findings, made full prompt reimbursement, reimbursement of charges. I'm ashamed that was, and was wrong in my actions. In these three and a half years, I have definitely had time to reflect and accept responsibility for my misconduct and have obeyed my order by the board by not practicing chiropractic from the time of my license revocation. I have spent the last several years rehabilitating myself and learning how to avoid future mistakes. I have maintained my professional skills and knowledge by performing the following rehabilitative measures. Completing the 168 hours of continuing education courses which emphasize ethics, laws, ethics and law, first aid technique, diagnostic testing, radiographic technique, and chiropractic philosophy. 69 hours of volunteer work helping underprivileged kids in the Englewood School District with proper stretching techniques, strengthening, teaching anatomy and medical terminology, helping the school baseball team at home and away games with the assistance of a Chris Bouch. In addition to become a volunteer at Coach Art Los Angeles that mentors kids suffering from chronic illness and engages them in various skills that interest them from art to sports. 
reading and summarizing 54 articles relating to chiropractic billing, coding, documentation, jurisprudence, and ethics, and over 14 hours of 1,400 hours of videos relating to chiropractic assessment and adjustment techniques. And finally, over two years of psychotherapy sessions, two times per week at the beginning with Arnold Blotch, um, in order to increase self-awareness, learn to accept and take responsibility for my actions and provide guidance and support to maintain introspective and disciplined, to stay introspective and disciplined in all aspects of my life moving forward. An assessment and recommendation progress uh, with progress Appropriate prognosis for Mr. Blush can be found on page 241 and 242 in the Exhibit 5. In, in closing, I pray that the eight exhibits of documentation I have submitted, along with the additional documents I submitted into evidence today, demonstrate my rehabilitation, competency, repentance, and redemption for my actions three and a half years ago. I humbly ask that the, my license be reinstated and restored to active status to practice chiropractic. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. We would uh, open ourselves to questions either from the Attorney General or from board members. There's nothing further at this time. Thank you, Mr. Zalen. All right, Mr. Eisenberg, any questions? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Deba Gohar, um, I'm wondering, some of the continuing education courses for instance, January 10th, 2019, and the courses taken on February 28th, 2019, look similar in their subject matter. Uh, was the material presented in a new way, or were you just attending the same seminar over and over again? Uh, there were in different ways. They were presented in different ways. Okay. Am I correct that it's the same subject matter? Yes. Okay. Were they taught by different uh, instructors? Uh, some were, some were the same instructors. Um, you mentioned the ongoing therapy. Are you still meeting with a therapist? Uh, not as often. I meet with him once every other week. Okay. Now, he mentions that your conduct uh, that formed the basis for this discipline could be explained by an impulsive need to cover up poor management. Do you know what he means by this? Well, I was explaining to him my irrational choice at the time of the soap note, and that's what he was referring to. Is that an ongoing issue? No. Um, with respect to the articles, it looks like you reviewed about one a week. How did you go about finding the articles for review? Uh, I would search anything related to ethics, law, jurisprudence related to chiropractic profession. Is this through an internet search? Yes. And as a point of clarification, are the dates included when you reviewed the article or are they the dates that the articles were drafted? I don't understand the question. So you've included dates. I, I, I read them as the dates that you actually reviewed the articles, but I wanted to clarify whether Correct. the dates the, the article. date that it was signed was the date that I read and understood the article. Okay. This is a court reporter. Doctor, please give Mr. Eisenberg just a few more seconds to finish the entire question, please. Sure. I apologize for the interruption. And, and what did you learn from, from having reviewed these 54 articles? What did you learn in relation to the discipline against your license? To always put my patient first rather than thinking about myself. So as far as, you know, I, I made the irrational decision back then, but what I should have done first is listen to the patient and understood where he's coming from. Um, after the date of submission of this petition, have you continued to seek out and review articles related to the subject matter? I have, but unfortunately I didn't uh, print them out and sign like I did these. I, I do have a series that are still in my laptop, but I didn't get a chance to submit them yet. You also watched 1,403 hours of videos relating to chiropractic assessment and adjustment techniques. How did you go about finding these videos? 
uh, mainly through YouTube. I would find different phys uh, physicians, chiropractors, uh, learn from their adjusting techniques, what kind of techniques they're using, um, how they treat certain conditions, so I can, in a way, stay up with the profession. And how did you go about ensuring that the information contained in these videos was reputable? Um, there are DCs, they're doctors of chiropractic. Uh, they're fairly well known on YouTube. Um, but, you know, from my own medical history, as far as chiropractic college, I, I know some things that are right and some things that are wrong. So I know what things I would do, what things I wouldn't do. And if you could summarize what you learned from these, you know, watching these several hours of videos, it doesn't, you can identify maybe one thing or if it would be best if you could summarize what, what you gathered from this. Um, just every physician's bedside manner, um, as far as how they, the different orthopedic tests they use, uh, the different stretching techniques they have, their adjusting techniques, whether it's diversified Gonstead, um, I try to really hone in on their, uh, as far as their finger placement on the cervical spine or the thoracic spine. If they have tissue slack, they don't have tissue slack. So I basically, I, I basically review their technique to see if they're doing it correctly. And are you still seeking out any videos on a regular basis? Uh, I do enjoy watching the videos. So yes, but I haven't, like I said, I haven't documented the extra videos I've watched. Um, with respect to your current employment, um, you noted a couple companies that look like they're self-owned. I'm curious if you can tell the board what uh, Inked On Apparel and Simple and Sound are. Inked On Apparel is a children's clothing line that I developed. Um, so I have different uh, children's clothing. Um, the Inked On is a management co company, business management. The Simple and Sound? That's correct. Um, what do you mean by that? A management company of what? Um, different offices, pharmacies, chiropractic office. Um, do you currently have any criminal convictions that this board is unaware of? No. Are there any criminal or civil charges pending against you in, in this state or in any other jurisdiction? No. Uh, do you have any objection if the board were to grant your license to granting your license on a probationary basis? No, I would not. Um, overall, what have you learned from the disciplinary process and, and the ultimate discipline of your license? I've learned that I should have more oversight over my billing, billing practices, my the people that work under me because I'm ultimately responsible to put the patient first at all times and, and to be an asset to the community as a chiropractor. Thank you. I have no further questions, Your Honor, uh, at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Eisenberg. All right, we'll open it up to the board for any questions. And it looks like Madam Chair has her hand up. So Madam Chair, questions. <clears throat> Hi, good afternoon, um, Mr. Deva Gohar. Um, I, I wanted to start with the continuing education, um, just to clarify a little further some of the, what the uh, Deputy Attorney General was speaking on. I noticed that this, all of these seminars are from the same company and doctor and, um, Relatively, uh, as I counted, uh, there's about six different sim six of the same seminars repeated, um, whether it was distance learning or in person. Can you glean a little uh, light upon why it is that you only selected to take continuing ed from this one provider and 
what different item or two did you learn from one seminar to the next? Because the content seems to be exactly the same. Sure, so as far as why I attended the mainly the same seminars or what it looks like the same seminar is my main mentor was Dr. Brian Porteous, who is the person that conducts these seminars. He was the one guiding me through my rehabilitation, showing me what I need to do in order to rehabilitate in his eyes. I understand, uh, I believe he had helped other uh, doctors also rehabilitate, so I trusted him and his word. So I, I did try to take a lot of my courses with him. Um, from course to for course, it was different. Uh, some courses he would have uh, different medical doctors come in um, talking about various different things. Other courses would be an MRI center physician that would come in and talk about different um, MRIs for different conditions that would be necessary to do. Um, different techniques were taught um, as far as, you know, uh, you know, whether it was adjusting children, adjusting elderly. Um, so it was some variation. There were some things that were also the same, but I would say uh, there were some variants. Okay. Um, also, I did not see any continuing ed since 2019. What have you done? What did you do in 2020? or 20, recently? Well, 2020, we were in a pan, uh, pandemic, so there wasn't much I could do outside of the home. Um, I had just had a newborn baby. A lot of time was spent with her. Okay, there was uh, distance learning. You previously had a lot of distance learning on this continuing ed list. That's why I asked because there those those continued and increased in 2020. Um, as far as your employment is concerned since then, you mentioned that you uh, have a apparel line and a business management. Can you expand expound a little bit on exactly what you do, um, what your part is in the business management company? What are your duties? and responsibilities? Um, I do administrative work. Which, can you give me some examples of what? Uh, meaning um, from uh, hiring, firing, from anywhere from pens, pencils, equipment that they need, making sure that uh, everything is functioning properly for the business to run, making sure that all the bills are being paid, and do you plan on continuing with the apparel line, the business management, and now real estate um, if your license is reinstated? Uh, most likely not. None of them or all of them, one of them, um, none of them? Uh, I would like to um, concentrate on my practice if I ever got my license back. And to that extent, regarding your practice, Tell me what it, what your plans are to begin or to open a practice if your license is reinstated. What are your plans to implement to get back into practice and uh, and do you have specific details on how, when, where that will happen? I would like to go back to my previous place of employment um, as far as I would have to think about how we'll move, move forward. Uh, that's, a, that's a decision I would have to make at the time. Um, okay, um, and at the beginning, at your during your opening statement, you made an apology. Can you expand upon what exactly are you apologizing for? Um, I'm apologizing for not taking responsibility for my actions at the very beginning. Um, for having that patient even take it to that degree or to that point, rather than just making them whole right away. Um, I regret, you know, trying to cover up my own actions with the soap notes um, and not having more oversight at the time of my billing practices. Thank you, I have nothing further at this time.
Thank you, Madam Chair. I am looking for any other raised hands. And Dr. Paris, I believe your hand is raised. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, Mr. Uh, Deva Gohar, um, thank you for a very detailed um, uh, packet. And, My and, pleasure. Yeah, and I commend you on, uh, you know, your continuing efforts and uh, rehabilitation here. I have a question um, regarding your uh, A2 questions. One, I'm wondering if you can detail um, a little bit more. Mr. Zellen mentioned uh, chiropractic volunteering. Um, and if you could detail a little bit more about what you were doing in that, uh, in volunteering there. And then my second question, which I'll be happy to repeat if we need to, I'd like to know more about the nature of your mentorship relationship. Um, I, I think you said it was a, Dr. Porteous, and I'm and I'm wondering if that was a uh, volunteer relationship, and he was volunteering his time to you, or were you going to his practice? Anyway, I'd just like you to tell me, or was that a a, a scenario where you were exchanging um, compensation one way or another for that? And uh, so either one you'd like to take first. Thank you. If I could just briefly correct something, if I said anything that it was chiropractic volunteering. Uh, it was a misstatement. It, 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 I, I thought I had said, and if I did not, I apologize. Just volunteering, not chiropractic volunteering. Thank, thank you for clarifying. Um, and th did so, Mr. Uh, Deba Gohar, was there any chiropractic volunteering? But there was definitely not any chiropractic volunteering. Okay. Point. Thank you. Then just the second question. Correct. Uh, as far as the second question, my. One of the first seminars I did was with Dr. Porteous, and it turned out that he had helped a lot of people um, in getting trying to get their license back or putting them on a rehabilitation program. And so I befriended him, and he befriended me, and he helped me. There was no money exchange. There was no compensation for anything. It was more I would ask him questions. Should I do this? Can I do this? What else can I do? How can I do this? And he would help me with that. And is he, was that relationship via phone or? Uh, no, mo mostly during, uh, sorry. Mostly yeah, during the seminars. So you were, uh, you were um, paying to attend his continuing education seminars and then in the breaks or before or after, he would be available for question and answer discussion with you. That's correct, but let me also take that back. I do. I do have his number. I did call him here and there for his knowledge on the on the matter. Um, but yes, it was mainly during his uh, courses. Uh, thank you. Uh, I have no no. Oh, I do have one further question. Did I hear correctly? You you did not do any continuing education in twenty twenty. I didn't. No. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. I have no further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Paris. Um, I believe Dr. Adams had his hand up uh, before do, before Madam Chair, so I'm going to let's go to Dr. Adams and then Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Dr. Uh, Deba Gohar. I hope I didn't butcher your name. I apologize if I did. That was close um, enough. Okay. What what is the correct pronunciation? And Deba Gohara. Deba Gohara, okay. Deba Gohara. Um, so so I, I too wanted to commend you for the, the, uh, the organization in your packet um, and also uh, the letters of, um, of, uh, of recommendation and uh, uh, character references. Uh, you obviously have a very supportive family and some friends um, and, uh, and uh, I commend you for your uh, for your efforts thus far. Also, um, about your diagnosis with MS, I'm sure that's uh, um, something that you didn't anticipate, but obviously you're you're willing to uh, to push yourself forward and, and keep going, and that says a lot about your character as well. Um, 
so I have a, I have a, a couple follow-up questions. Um, uh, some of the things that, uh, that um, I want to know about is, as I reviewed the record about uh, your interaction with your staff uh, relative to the billing, you've, you've commented that uh, about, you know, recognizing you need uh, better oversight um, and, the, and you're taking responsibility for, for that happened. Um, uh, it, in one of your letters, there was reference to the embezzlement issue that happened with your manager at the time. And you seem to reference that as, um, at, at least initially, as the excuse for what happened and perhaps your delay in, in handling things appropriately. But it sounds like you're, at least from what I'm hearing, and I want, you know, your testimony, your your your, your statement, you know, that that you're acknowledging that that you have that full responsibility. And and, and uh, so please please comment on that. That that I you're, 100 percent you're understanding. Full no, I 100% take full responsibility. Um, and one, one other, a couple other things relative to your interaction with staff. Um, your, your massage therapist, Abney, and also uh, the physical therapist, I believe, that worked for you, Franco, that, um, of course, categorically denied um, having done any massage on PS. Um, and your efforts to um, encourage Franco to um, sign notes that you had fabricated. Uh, I'm just curious about your um, relationship with the other staff and the the messages that they wrote. Were those were those um, did you knowingly ask them, knowing that they were you were asking them to make uh, false statements? No, not at the time. So when so when they provided documentation that they had seen um, Franco uh, massage this uh, this particular individual PS multiple times, uh, you knew you knew that to be false, or you didn't. I didn't know that to be false. Why did you then ask Franco to? Um, hmm. Uh, falsify the uh, or sign documents that she knew to be false. Uh, I mean, I, it comes back to the whole bad decision at the time. Obviously, I've, I've admitted to falsifying the notes, and um, it was bad, bad choice. I should have never done it. So, what what steps are you assuring us that, um, aside from what you've already done? What what steps have you taken or are going to continue to take that you will not be in this situation again? Uh, I will definitely have more oversight over my business, my billing practices. Um, make sure I, you know, verify everything before it's sent out. Um, always listen to the patient right away, right, um, and. Just be a good doctor, understanding the patient. Is it your intent to continue to, if you do and practice, also, to have massage therapists? Sorry, go, I'm go sorry, ahead. I'm sorry. I was <laughs> also, you know, my psychotherapist is amazing. We build a good friendship. He's also, you know, a, an amazing person that I can talk to at any time. He's also a life coach on the side. So, uh, I know in the future, if I ever do have any kind of, you know, stressors, I can call them right away and deal with it, right? Uh, rather than making such a rational decision. And just finally, are you, if you go into practice again, it sounds like you're in decision about whether you'll, um, you know, practice the way you, you did before or not. Uh, do you plan on having massage therapists and physical therapists in your employ? Uh, I would like to own a multidisciplinary practice in the future. Yes. And what about having massage on days when you're not in the office? Uh, no. That will not happen. 
And then uh, relative to uh, inked, is it inked on and simple sound? That's correct. Are those those the two companies? So, are do you you earn a you earn income from those those businesses? Um, the simple and sound, yes. The inked on is no. So the simple and sound is that a is that a, a business that you created or that you that or they hired you to do administrative work from hiring and firing and making sure everything's ready? No, no, it was a it was a business management corporation that I started. And when did you start that business? I started that in uh, early 2018, I believe. And you what you take a consulting fee or you or you charge by the hour? How do you how do you do it? Uh, it depends on the business that I'm dealing with. Usually, uh, a salary from from each business that 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 hires you. Depending on the business, yes. And you said you work with chiropractors and pharmacists. You said that's correct. And are some of those pharmacists your family members? Because I understand you have some family members that are pharmacists. Yes. And you started this corporation after your license was revoked. That is correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate Thank your you. answers you. and your candidness. All right. Uh, Dr. Uh, oh, Madam Chair. Madam Chair has her hand up again. Thank you, Your Honor. I just have one follow up question. Um, regarding, you mentioned that. Uh, Dr. Porteous, your mentor, gave you a rehab program. Can you tell me what that program entailed? Was that step by step of what you need to do to rehab or step by step what you need to bring forth before the board for this evaluation and or for for reinstatement and hearing? So I knew that he did rehabilitation programs for prior chiropractors, but with, for me, for example, I never really did that program with him. It was, he was just the source that I can go to for recommendations on what I couldn't do to rehabilitate myself. Um, I'm sorry. So maybe I'm still missing something here. You said he, he has done rehabilitative programs. So what does that entail when, when you say a rehabilitative program that you know about for others as well as yourself? What did that entail? Did he tell you what, what doctors to go to? What is the rehabil what does Dr. Poirier's no, so, rehabilitation program consist of? Um, basically, as far as for me, for example, what I needed to do to rehabilitate myself. For example, would these articles help in my rehabilitation and you know and if it didn't i wouldn't want to waste time on that right so i wanted to hone in my rehabilitation on everything that was significant for my situation so i would ask him for his advice if something is pertinent in my situation i have nothing further thank you all right thank you madam chair and it looks as though no one else has their hand raised. Let me double check here. All right, correct. Okay. Um, at this time, well, before we close, I'll ask Mr. Eisenberg if he has any further questions or comments. No further questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Eisenberg and Mr. Zellin. Anything further? No, thank you very much, Your Honor, and thank the board for their time. All right. With that, then, that concludes the petition hearing in this matter. The record is closed, the matter submitted, and we are off the record. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to you. And Your Honor, if it um, pleases you, I would like to ask that we take a five minute break at this time and then resume. Okay, we'll do a five minute recess then. So uh, we'll be back at 2.45. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, it's 2.46. Is everyone all set? And is Dr. El Shimi on the line? Hello. Okay, you're there. And uh, Dr. El Shimi, are you represented by council? Uh, just myself. Okay. I hope okay. I do a good job. Okay, well, you know what, I, what I'll do is um, when we go on the record, I'll ask if you're representing yourself and um, just kind of explain briefly a little bit to you about the procedures in this matter. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. All right, um, Mr. Sanjeet, are you ready to begin court reporting? Ready to go, Your Honor, thank you. Thank you. All right, so we are here this afternoon before the Board of Chiropractic Examiners for the early termination of probation of Mohammed Syed Al Shaimi. This is agency case number A is in Alpha, C is in Charlie, 2016 1067, OAH number 2021. 040765. My name is Danette Brown, and I am an administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings assigned to hear these petition matters. Uh, will the members of the board kindly identify themselves for the record, starting with Madam Chair, please? Dr. McLean, present. Dr. David Paris, present. Frank Rufino, present. Dr. Lawrence Adams, present. Raphael Sweet, present. And Madam Chair, are all, or do we have a quorum of the board members present? Yes, we have a quorum, Your Honor. Thank you, ma'am. And may I take the appearance of the Deputy Attorney General, please? Good afternoon, Your Honor, board members and petitioner. Joshua Eisenberg, Deputy Attorney General, appearing today on behalf of the Attorney General, pursuant to Government Code Section 11522, representing the people of the state of California. I'm here to assist the panel in fact finding. My role is not adversarial, but it's intended to protect the public's interest and to ensure that the panel has adequate information from which to make a decision. Thank you, Mr. Eisenberg. And uh, Dr. El Shimi, if you could identify yourself for the record and please, uh, uh, if you could kindly state your, uh, or spell your last name, please. Sure, uh, Dr. Mohammed El Shimi, E L hyphen S H I M is in Mary, E is in Edward, Y is in yellow. Um, here on case number AC 2016-1067. All right, thank you, Dr. El Shimi. Okay, so before we got on the record, I asked if you were representing yourself here this afternoon and uh, you answered in the affirmative. So I, yes. I just wanted to explain to you a little bit about this afternoon's proceeding. Um, of course, as you well know, the board is primarily concerned with your rehabilitation since your license has been placed on probation. And uh, the Deputy Attorney General, Mr. Eisenberg will be proceeding first to provide an orientation of this matter. And also he will be introducing the petition documents. And then after that, uh, you, Dr. El Shimi, will have an opportunity to testify under oath um, as to why you believe your probation ought to be terminated early. You can call witnesses if you so wish. Um, of course, you know, you and any of your witnesses will be subject to a questioning by both the board members and the Deputy Attorney General. And of course, again, the board is particularly concerned with rehabilitation that you may have engaged in after your license uh, was placed on probation. Uh, you're reminded that the board has had the benefit of reading your petition packet so you don't really necessarily have to go through all of the documents or repeat anything in the package, unless of course there's something in there that you really wanna point out. Um, after that, the board will go into closed session to deliberate and you won't receive a decision today 
but you'll receive it uh, at some point in the future via either um, through through the email or through the regular mail or both. Any questions at all about the proceeding in this matter, sir? No, thank you. You've been uh, very explanatory. Okay. And before I forget, what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and put you under oath in case you uh, make any statements um, that you would like for this board to consider. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, sir? Yes, I swear. Okay, very good. So at this time, um, Mr. Eisenberg will provide an orientation of the case as well as presentation of the documents. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll first uh, begin by identifying and offering into evidence as Exhibit 1 the original petition packet and accompanying documents. The board members, petitioner, and Your Honor have a copy of the same set of this exhibit. It consists of the following documents. Uh, the notice of hearing that was sent by the board to the petitioner for today's time and date of hearing, a probation compliance report, a petition for early termination of probation submitted by petitioner and dated November 13th, 2020, which includes a personal statement from petitioner regarding his prior discipline, his employment, his volunteer work, and his continuing education courses. Also included in the petition packet is a record of the petitioner's prior disciplinary history with the board, including decisions and orders, stipulated settlements, statement of issues, accusation and petitions to revoke probation, and a default decision and order in the various cases, which I will describe in greater detail when I go through the petitioner's background with the board. At this time, I offer this packet into evidence as Exhibit 1. Thank you, Mr. Eisenberg. All of the documents have been marked collectively as Exhibit 1. Dr. Elshimi, any objections to the admission of all of these documents? Uh, no. Okay, so all of the documents are admitted. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I'll provide a background of the petitioner's license history and we'll go into greater depth into the prior discipline with the board. On January 28th, 2011, the board issued chiropractic license DC 31876 to the petitioner. The board issued petitioner's license per per pursuant to a decision and order effective January 28th, 2011, which adopted a stipulated settlement and disciplinary order. Petitioner's license was immediately revoked and his license was placed on probation for three years subject to a stayed revocation, which included standard and optional terms and conditions of probation. The probation order was based on petitioner's 2001 conviction for violating vehicle code section 23109 sub C, unlawful exhibition of speed, and his 2005 conviction for violating penal code sections 487 sub A, grand theft, and 602.5 unauthorized entry of property, as well as petitioner's failure to disclose these convictions on his license application. In a default decision and order effective November 9, 2012, petitioner's license was re revoked. The revocation order arose from petitioner's 2012 conviction for violating penal code section 550 subdivision B sub 1 presentation of a false insurance claim. Petitioner's crime involved his submission of a false report to his automobile insurer. Petitioner reported that his vehicle had been damaged in an accident when petitioner had actually purchased the vehicle in a damaged condition. Petitioner also failed to report the conviction on his quarterly probation reports to the board. <clears throat> As a result of his 2012 conviction, petitioner was placed on criminal probation for 36 months. Petitioner has completed his criminal probation and his conviction was dismissed pursuant to penal code section 1203.4. On September 30th, 2015, petitioner signed and subsequently filed with the board a petition for reinstatement of revoked license. Following a hearing on petitioner's petition for reinstatement, petitioner's license was reinstated. The license was then immediately revoked with the revocation stayed pending a five-year probation on certain terms and conditions 
effective May 4th, 2017. On October 25th, 2018, petitioner signed a petition for early termination of probation and submitted it to the board. On October 2nd, 2019, the board issued an order denying petitioner's request for early termination of probation and denying his request to elim eliminate term 14 for the auditing of billing practices. However, the board granted modification of term 14 to change the title of the term to from monitoring, excuse me, to monitoring of billing practices. And the phrase a licensed certified public accountant in the state was changed so as to allow for either a licensed CPA or an independent billing monitor approved by the board. The decision was effective November 1st, 2019. On November 13th, 2020, petitioner signed a petition for early termination of probation and submitted it to the board. Petitioner's probation is currently set to expire on May 4th of 2020. Because the burden is on petitioner in these proceedings, I have no further statements at this time, but I would reserve the right to question the petitioner. Thank you, Mr. Eisenberg. All right, uh, Dr. Alshaimi, is there anything you would like to say, uh, provide some testimony? You're already under oath, so you can certainly do that. Uh, do you have any witnesses? Or is it just yourself? Uh, I do have, uh, you know, the doctor I work here with, uh, which is also, who's been doing my bill and monitor, so, you know, I can get him to testify or cross-examine. Um, I, I understand that what I did was wrong. The first, the first incident which led me to be on probation in the first place, in the first place, was honestly a mistake. It wasn't like me trying to deceive the board. It was um, after I got convicted with these things, I went to a class and I, I thought the class was supposed to eliminate it off of my record. So I got kind of confused about the question when they were asking if I was convicted of anything. I didn't know if I was supposed to vote yes or no. So I figured maybe because I went to the class, it would be eliminated from the record. So I vote no. Um, so that was my original mistake. That it wasn't me trying to actually deceive the board or, you know, decision of the state. It was just an honest mistake. I, I, I wasn't, it, it, it just, it was a mistake. Um, the second um, event that happened that I totally agree that I was, I take full responsibility for that, which, you know, messed up the probation was, um, I had a vehicle that I bought from an auction that had some damage to it. But then it got further damage when it was parked on the street. And when they were investigating the claim, they asked me if there was any previous damage to the vehicle. And I lied. I said no, because I thought they would deny my claim and they would never fix the new damage. So that's completely my mistake. I take 100% responsibility for that. Um, I would say I was, you know, a victim of poverty and greed on that one. Um, I was much younger. This was more than 10 years ago. Um, when this happened, I knew that my license was going to get revoked. So I left and um, went to Egypt for a while. So I was practicing chiropractic in Egypt. Um, I also found the love of my life. I got married. Now I have three kids, you know, five-year-old, three-year-old. And now I have a six-month-old as well. Um, so I understand I have to be the role model for them which I didn't have, you know, because my dad left when I was two years old. So I never really had that um, type of guidance, I would say. Um, so I'm trying to be that guidance for my kids as well and that role model. So I don't I don't believe I would ever do that again. Um, it was a mistake that I made and it was a stupid mistake and I overpaid for it. Um, and now I recognize that. Uh, more than ever, especially after having my wife and kids now in my life. So I just would like to move forward with this and gain the trust of the people and, you know, the board. I believe I gained the trust of the, the people as well, because, I mean, um, I even just got this thing in the mail from Yelp. Um, got like a five-star reviews and um, got five-star reviews in Google. I still keep up with my patients in Egypt. Um, I've never had any complaints or anybody that, you know, didn't like my service that I provided with chiropractic as far as here or in Egypt. 
and I've been practicing since 2012, essentially. Um, so I never had any issues with my chiropractic license for as far as like, you know, practicing goes. I did have issues with my own personal life, which has obviously affected the trust of the board. And I understand you guys are here to protect the public and they can, you know, promise you that I would never do anything to hurt the public at this point moving forward um, or have done in the past. I still do uh, volunteer work as well with um, my mom. She takes care of the elderly, the IH, she works for IHSS. So every once in a while, I will go with her to some of her patients and help them um, figure out how to do some stretches so and how to lay in bed and ergonomically correctly and how to flip over, just basically trying to better their life as well. Um, I still keep in touch with patients in Egypt and consult with them uh, when they have any questions as well. I would love to be able to move back and forth, like to travel back and forth. And this probation has been kind of hindering that because if I leave more than 30 days, I obviously have to notify you guys. And then it kind of puts a pause on it. And I kind of just want to move past this point and be able to have that freedom of moving back and forth and also having the freedom, of maybe having other chiropractors work for me or supervise other chiropractors, which I can't do that at the moment as well. Would you like me to call my witness? Yes, sir. Uh, well, before we do that, I think we'll have to ask you some questions and then you can put on your next witness. So, sure. uh, Mr. Eisenberg, any questions on cross-examination? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I think you touched on it a little bit there at the end uh, with respect to the supervision requirements, but you know, with a year left in your probation, you know, why are you seeking the early termination? Why is that significant to your uh, continuing practice? Um, I have practices in Egypt that I've left uh, since, what, 2015 or 16, and they're still requiring me to go back and maintain those patients. The other thing is, too, there's a lot of uh, fake chiropractors that are popping off in Egypt right now, especially after I left that they're not actually licensed. They just go to a seminar and they claim to be chiropractors. So I, I just wanted to go back, hopefully by the end of this year, if you guys grant me this, um, so I can, first of all, take care of my old patients because some of them are on the verge of actually getting surgery if I don't go back and try to get them taken care of. And I would love to not have them go into surgery um, I have emails and messages. I don't know if you can read them, though. Some of them in Arabic with me in contact with those patients. The other thing is I would love to be able to go there, and I already have some media that's scheduled, um, if you guys grant me this, to be able to go on interviews on television and on the radio and basically try to explain more of chiropractic and what we do and what the recommend requirements are to become a chiropractor and to bring awareness to uh, chiropractic and the fact of the matter is there's a lot of people that are advertising themselves as chiropractors when they're not chiropractors and to try bringing awareness to the people about how to check on that as well so it's really me trying to protect the profession as well and the name of the profession in egypt which i kind of started when i was there um we were really successful when i went back we started two different practices we're actually starting a third one now in cairo um, and I'm trying to get a fourth one going in Ismailia as well. And um, I just want to protect the profession. I wanted to under make people you know, understand that chiropractic is not what some of those people are that are practicing there right now. Because I'm worried that one of those people is going to get somebody injured or do something wrong to someone. And then what they're going to say is, oh, I went to a chiropractor and they hurt me, which I already had that experience even when I was in Egypt. There was people that would advertise themselves as chiropractors and I even would go to their office to find out if they were and they ended up being nothing but somebody that went to a seminar and some people got hurt. Um, I've had patients that had broken C7 vertebra, you know. Um, I've had patients that had herniated discs because of like, you know, rotary moves that they did on them. I've seen patients that had, you know, their mom got a stroke 
because they went to somebody like that because they do rotary moves on them. Um, so I'm really trying to protect the profession from getting a bad rap before he even gets, you know, a head start in Egypt. And um, I feel like the longer I'm, I'm waiting here and not able to travel, the longer this is getting worse because there's more and more of them as we speak. I just got actually a message this morning as we speak from one of my patients that is telling me about how there's a chiropractor, a new one that she just saw. See, good morning. See what's going on in Egypt from chiropractor who claims to learn from one day course. And this is in Arabic. And, and this is literally just sent to me this morning. So that they're, they're increasing by the day as we speak. And there's no regulation at all over there whatsoever. So these people come out and say they're chiropractors and they're not. Um, Dr. Oshimi, do you have the uh, petition packet that you submitted in front of you? Yes, I do. Okay, can you turn, it's bait stamped at the bottom, page BCE, um, I think followed by five zeros and a three. I'm on page three. Just let me know when you've got there. This one, Your Honor? Uh, as long as it says three at the bottom, and, and I don't know if you're referring to <laughs> our judge here, um, certainly you don't have to refer to me as Your Honor, but... <laughs> oh. Sorry, I wanted to show some respect. I, I appreciate it. I mean, I'll, I'll take the title, but uh, not necessary. Thank you. Um, so, you know, you acknowledge that you were, in fact, convicted of the criminal uh, of the crimes that I have described in the background section of this proceeding. Yes. I... And you acknowledge that you previously failed to disclose those convictions and, and mark the correct box, which you described as a mistake, correct? It was a hundred percent mistake. I, I should have consulted with someone or I should have asked more questions and okay. um, I didn't. Excuse me. I apologize for speaking over you. Did you, can you take a look at the very first uh, box at the top of this page? Um, and if you can just read me the first, uh, the first sentence so that I know we're on the same page. Have you ever been convicted or pled no contest to violation of any law of a foreign country, the United States, any state, or a local coordinates? You must include all misdemeanor and felony conviction, regardless of the age of the offense, including those which have been set aside under Penal Code Section 1203.4, traffic violation of 300 or less need to be reported. Um, I see what you're, what you're saying is, I read in this now, I completely understand that I should have put yes. But at the time, uh, I was confused. So I was, uh, what I'm trying to explain is my intention were not to deceive you guys or deceive the board or the public. My intentions were not that. I just got confused about the question because I completed a course that I was understanding it would kind of make that go away from my record. Okay. okay. Do you understand now that on any renewal documents where this question is asked, that the answer to that is yes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay. I've, I've paid a lot for that mistake. I, I completely understand now. I mean, worst case scenario, but yes, even if I don't understand it fully, right? And or at least get a consult or, you know, a different resource. But I definitely understand now I should have put a yes especially when I read it out loud to you as, as we speak. Okay. Do you have any criminal convictions aside from what we've discussed that the board is unaware of? No. And are there any current criminal charges or civil charges pending against you in this state or in any other jurisdiction? No, thank you, God. Okay. Is it your intention to continue working in California uh, upon the termination of your probation, whether it's through this proceeding or at the end of probation, or are you going back to Egypt? Oh, yes. I mean, my mom still lives here. My dad lives here. I, I just, you know, I want to kind of live both life if it's possible. 
but with this probation is kind of hindering that because travel's restricted or you know it's not you, you, i have to report it and then it kind of puts a pause on it okay what other assurances can you give the board that the criminal conduct that we've described and the acts of dishonesty are are in the past are behind you for one thing this has been so long i'm completely a different person i have more responsibility toward my family uh, my kids my wife um i'm closer to you know my maker as well um so i understand this is going to be something in the judgment afterwards as well so i shouldn't be doing anything wrong so i don't have something to get judged on in in the afterlife as well um but yeah i mean b beside that i i i mean i i been practicing since 2011 and the last incident was in 2011 i believe and haven't had any issues with anything with the law or any matter so i mean at least for the last 10 years i also been proven that i i'm, I'm not that person and i just want to do the right thing from here on out Thank you, Dr. al uh, Your Honor, I don't have any further questions uh, at this time. Thank you, Mr. Eisenberg. Any questions from the board? Hey, Madam Chair. Hi, good afternoon, Ms. Dr. al -Shami. I just um, have a couple of follow-up questions to Mr. Eisenberg's. Um, you mentioned um, that uh, that you will you want to practice in both locations, and but currently you also stated, if I'm not um, misunderstanding, that you have practices that are open in Egypt currently, three or four practices that are currently running in Egypt. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. And who is running those practices? Is there a doctor? Uh, is there a therapist? Who's running those practices? So to give you a little bit of history, we initially started when I went over to Egypt. I, I just kind of like was roaming around trying to find out, you know, if there's anybody taking care of the spine or anything has to do with the spine in Egypt. So I found a hospital in Alexandria, whose name is uh, Hospital al Um, And for my luck, uh, his son, the owner of the hospital, was starting, um, so he's also a doctor, but he does um, uh, constructive surgery and that kind of stuff. But he had a machine called the Extend Track, which does a lot of um, decompression, spinal decompression, and they were starting a new practice with it. So I, I introduced myself to him and he had physical therapists on, on staff. So he asked me if I could help him run the machine and that's how I started in the hospital. So I was you know, running the machine for them and slowly I started introducing chiropractic because I you know, show him the research and I explained to him that the research shows that you know, extend tract loan, it, yeah, helps with the decompression, but then once you, you know, go back to abnormal biomechanics, and gravity takes its hold on the patient again, things tend to go back into where they were before. So I explained to them that, you know, with chiropractic care, this could actually become even a better result or prognosis for patients. So then we started introducing chiropractic to the patients that were doing the extent track. And slowly we did so well that we uh, started being just the chiropractor and not using the machine except for you know, I would refer it to the physical therapists that were there. And we progressed to the point where I actually took over that clinic. So it was half chiropractic, half physical therapy. And then we ended up opening another clinic in Alexandria in a different location that had just the chiropractic without the physical therapy. And he has the um, uh, cosmetology stuff, like not the cosmetology, what do you call it? Um, you know, uh, what do you call that? Um, you know, when you do Botox and other things, liposuction, I forget what you call those clinics. But anyway, that's that's mainly what the clinic is based on. Its name is Glow. So they open up another one in Cairo now too as well. And I'm a partner with them, uh, but what they're doing is when I'm not there, 
they're using physical therapy to help those patients with modalities, um, like you know ultrasound, Russian stem, um, those kind of you know modalities, tens unit stretching. So sometimes I consult with them by them sending me their X-rays, some of the patients, and then I'm able to tell them based on the curves I'm seeing in their lumbar or their neck, you know what exercises and what stretches they should be doing to try to correct those curvature at least till we go back and try to restore biomechanics in the actual joint. So let me just get this clear. Are you saying that there is no other chiro, chiropractor there working in those clinics, that it is only physical therapists? Exactly. And that you do consult with them via, I would assume in this day and age, video conference What's or up? telehealth yeah. or something, correct? Exactly. Okay. Um, there's a there's a big shortage in and there's a big need for chiropractors in Egypt. The problem is lately there's been a lot because of the YouTube videos that you're seeing out there and people doing like manipulation or whatever you want to call it on video. So a lot of these people have been watching those videos or going to a seminar and then they try to replicate these moves and they call themselves chiropractors on these patients. So the problem is people are getting hurt. And we're, I'm, I'm just trying to, I even try to, you know, have conversation with these people, but they end up blocking me because when I talk to them, they, you know, one of them, I was like, which college did you go to? He's like, oh, I went to Pharaoh's college, which definitely there's no such thing as Pharaoh's college, you know? So then Thanks, when I, I come, have... sorry. I'm sorry. Thanks. I have nothing further. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. And it doesn't appear that we have any other hands raised. Oh, Dr. Paris. Uh, so, uh, hi, Dr. El Shami. I have a quick question, just a, a clarification. Has has your probation been told? Has it? Has because, you, have because you been over thirty days? Okay. No. But I'm trying to do that, but that's been what's holding me back is is the toll thing. I just don't want to keep, you know, stretching this further than it needs to. Okay. But you haven't left for a long enough period to have the uh, no. tolling on the probation. Okay. Thank you. No other questions. Thank you, Dr. Paris. And it appears we do not have, have any other, per Whoop, Dr. Adams. Go ahead. Uh, yes, doctor. Um, Oi. I appreciate your uh, your advocacy for chiropractic in uh, in the foreign country. Um, Thank you. Uh, one of my questions is um, when you left um, the United States after the revocation of your license and you went to Egypt. Um, you practiced there. Uh, they they did not have licensure at the time. No, I actually tried to even pursue that by going to the different universities there. Um, and obviously, you know, Egypt has been going a lot of, you know, going through a lot of turmoil, uh, the change of power and, you know, the brother Muslim brotherhoods and so I was there when Mursi was elected before, you know, now we have the CC guy, uh, not to get into too much politics, but there was a lot of, uh, you know, you could say lack of government involvement. And until this day, there's lack of regulation. Uh, when I went there and explained to them about chiropractic and maybe trying to get a, you know, license in chiropractic going, they said the requirement needed to have at least 16 uh, doctors of chiropractors practice you know, practicing in Egypt for them to even start to recognize the profession and maybe make it a licensing, a licensing issue, uh, licensing um, um, in, in Egypt, which we don't, we, we, we don't really have, you know, maybe I think there's like two that go back and forward um, in Egypt and I would be like the third one. Um, so, and that's kind of something that I would like to change as well, but I think it's just going to take time and uh, knowing the right people, which is this is why my intention this time when I go back is to try to get more onto public media 
So try to get on television interviews, on um, radio interviews, and just try to get more publicly known. So maybe I can get my voice heard to the next level or somebody higher up to get this license. So when I was practicing there, I was technically practicing with my physical therapy board certification under the uh, protection of the hospital. So I was more like under physical therapy umbrella. So did you identify when you were in Egypt as a chiropractor? Yeah, when you were working with patients? Chiropractic was. They would call it chirobatic, you know. They would, a lot of times they would still call me like, you know, physical therapist. They didn't really know what chiropractic was. Unless you came into me and, and, and got adjusted, and then I would explain it to them. But then the problem and the confusion was there's other people calling themselves chiropractors when they're not chiropractors. And, and these people had like clinics on, you know, waterfront. And I don't know how they were getting away with it. Actually, I still I'm mind boggled by how the government is not taking care of this. What, what I'm getting at is, is that when you had your license revoked and you were in Egypt, did you identify yourself as a licensed chiropractor, as a chiropractor when you were working with patients? No, no. It was more like a physical therapist in the, in the actual um, hospital. So I was working under the physical therapy license of the hospital, not as a chiropractor. When you opened up your clinics in Egypt, I, I'm assuming that were you, you said you have three clinics. Did you open those up uh, before you had your license reinstated in the United States? No, this was after. The one I'm talking about in Cairo, this is actually just open right now, like literally last month. And we haven't, I haven't even been, you know, there yet. But, um, you know, they send me the pictures and everything else of it. All right. I have no other questions. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Adams. Looking for additional raised hands, and it does not appear that there are any. All right, so that concludes your testimony, Dr. El um, you, you mentioned that you do have a witness that you would like yeah. to testify on your behalf. Yes, Dr. Evan here. I practice with him, and he does my bill and monitor. You, you want to come in, Dr. Evan? We share space for a while. We actually known each other from even. Um, before chiropractic college, we did a lot of prerequisites together. Okay, so, let me go ahead and um, so, and uh, swear him in, and then he can identify himself for the record. So, sir, right. if you could raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, sir? Yes. And could you please state and spell your name for the record, please? Evan Wool, E-V-A-N, last name, W-O-E-H-L. All right, thank you, Mr. Wool. And what is it you would like to say about the petitioner in this matter? Well, I guess uh, he works in my practice. I am a doctor of chiropractic as well. And he has been in here, and the only reason uh, I allow him in here because he is an honest person, and I trust my family to be adjusted by him. I've watched him operate. He goes by the rules. I've gone through his books, head to toe on everything. There are no discrepancies. There is no incorrect billing. Everything is, is by the book, up and up, legit. And I trust him. I wouldn't allow someone in my office that I couldn't give the key and say, hey, you do what's in the best interest of the people that come in here. So if I'm out of town, he adjusts my patients and, and, and helps me out. But his, as for his character, he's solid. He's a good guy and the chiropractic profession needs more people like this. I mean, I went to school with a lot of pinheads. It's a business. I would not let a lot of those people in this practice, but him, no problem. I trust him. He's a good person. He's trying to do the best he can and do what 
he can to help people get better without drugs and surgery. So if my testimony holds any weight with you guys, then I hope that it's in the best interest of, uh, of him right now to move on because he's doing the right thing. I watch him day in and day out. And I wouldn't have somebody in here if I didn't know, trust, and respect. All right, thank you, Mr. Wool, or Dr. Wool. Um, uh, does Mr. Eisenberg, the Deputy Attorney General, have any questions? No questions for the witness, thank you. Thank you, and any questions from the board? Does not appear there are any hands raised. Okay, so that concludes your testimony, Dr. Wool. Thank you very much for testifying. Thank you. And you're excused from the witness stand. All right, any other witnesses, Ms. Uh, Dr. Alshimi? Oh, God is my witness now. Okay, <laughs> very good. Um, We've got the documents in. Um, I believe everybody has asked questions of you. Um, anything further, Mr. Eisenberg? Nothing further. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Okay, anything further from the board? If, if not, um, we shall go ahead and conclude the petition hearing in this matter. The record is closed, the case is submitted, and we are off the record. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Have a good day, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I will also go ahead and I think sign off unless anything else is uh, needed from me. And I just wanted to thank the board members and uh, and your honor for for today and for the proceedings. And uh, I'll see you all again in the future. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Eisenberg. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thank All you. Right. And uh, sir, court reporter, if uh, you could kindly give me the number of pages for each matter, and then we'll let you go. Yes, Judge. For the first witness, I've got 34 pages with a stop time of 154. For the second witness, I have a page count of 24 pages with a stop time of 2.40. For the third witness, I have a page count of 25 pages with a stop time of 3.28 p.m. Can you uh, give me the uh, number of pages again for uh, for the first case, Dr. Gis oh my goodness, Dr. Gaduzzi? 34 pages, ma'am. 34, perfect. All right. Thank you, sir. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Always a pleasure, Judge. Absolutely. Uh, have a good day, board members. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Madam Chair, I'll hand it back to you. So now we will go into closed session to deliberate these cases. And I don't know if the moderator needs to switch over to yes. what needs to happen. Okay. Thank you, um, mm -hmm. Madam Chair. Let me go ahead and I'm going to stop the recording and then I'm going to lock this event. Okay, so it's locked and then I'm going to dismiss it.